After lunch, we relaxed for a while. Dad took a snooze. Grandma and Mrs. Tubman had a heavy discussion about the problems of the city. <clears throat> Mr. Tubman read a mystery, and the three of us played hearts with a deck of cards Sheila had brought in her pack. I'm always prepared, she told us. After a couple of hands, she said, speaking of prepared, is there a bathroom on this boat? Look around, I told her. Do you see a bathroom? Since we were in an open boat, it didn't take much to figure out the answer to that question. Well, what's a person supposed to do? She asked. A person is supposed to go before. I did. Then a person is supposed to wait until we're back. She checked her watch. That's almost two more hours. If it's an emergency, Dad has a bucket. I told her, a bucket, Sheila said, that's disgusting, Jimmy and I said at the same time. Just when you think it's possible that the two of you are human beings, you prove I'm wrong. Sheila's outburst woke Dad. He checked his watch. We better get started. We'll be heading into the wind on the way back, so it's going to take longer. Once we are underway, it felt a lot colder than before. We pulled on our sweatshirts. Sheila shivered and moved closer to me. I moved away from her and closer to Jimmy. It got more and more windy as the sky filled with big gray clouds. The boat tipped and water splashed over the rail, spraying us. That's when Jimmy grabbed my arm and said, I feel funny. Dad, I called, Jimmy feels funny. Keep your eye on the horizon, Dad told him. What horizon? Jimmy asked. His eyes were rolling around in their sockets and he was turning green. Grandma said, Be breathe through your nose, Jimmy. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. There were waves now with soft white caps. The boat tipped way over and Sheila screamed, Do something before we all drowned. It's all right, Grandma said. This is a keel boat. It can't go over. Jimmy was trying to breathe through his nose, like Grandma said. I think he was more scared than sick. A puff is coming, Warren, Grandma called. A puff of what? Sheila cried, grabbing me. A puff of wind, Grandma said. Look at that water. You see how it's rippling in front of us? Then she shouted to Dad, Warren, head up in the puff. All of a sudden, the boat, which was already tipped halfway over, tipped so far the sails touched the water. The tubmen screamed and clung to each other. Sheila dug her fingernails into my hand. Jimmy groaned and hung on to me. He breathed his sardines and onions right into my face. Let Muriel take the tiller, Mrs. Tubman yelled. You want Muriel to be captain? Dad said. Fine. Really, Warren, Grandma said. You're overreacting. But she switched places with him and took the tiller, shouting out orders. Ease the sheets, Warren. We're going to sail off the wind. It may take a while longer, but we'll all be more comfortable. The boat straightened up and sailed more smoothly. smoothly. Jimmy released his grip on me. So did Sheila. Her nails left marks on my hand. The Tubmans breathed more easily, and Dad sulked. Grandma sailed the boat in like a pro. She's a, she explained everything as she did it to make us feel more secure. Now, as we pull up, Warren will jump onto the dock, she said. And while he ties us up, I'll drop the sail. She looked over at Dad. Wait for me to give you the signal, Warren. But Dad didn't wait. He jumped too soon and landed in the water. Person overboard, Sheila shouted. Mrs. Tubman and I remembered our responsibilities. We pointed at Dad. We pointed as some guy from the dock reached into the water and pulled him out. We pointed as someone else wrapped him in a blanket. We pointed until Dad looked at us and called, Okay, th that's enough. You can stop pointing now. 
he was shivering so hard was his teeth were clackering. His teeth were clicking. Mr. Fargo picked us up in his truck. As soon as we pulled into our driveway, Sheila jumped out and ran for the house. I have to go so bad. Did you all have a nice sale? Mom asked the rest of us. Then she noticed Dad. Warren, why did you go swimming in your clothes? Dad didn't answer. I'll be in the t -t tub, he managed to say, heading for the house. Mom looked at Grandma. What happened? She asked. Oh, the usual, Grandma said. But all's well that ends well. Fudge jumped off the porch steps. All's well that ends well, he sang. I see he's recovered, I said to Mom. More or less. Then Tootsie rolled over and held her arms out to me. Up, up. I picked her up. She was barefooted and covered with blue. Did you get more blueberries? I asked Mom. No. Why? Look at Tootsie's feet. Oh, oh, Mom said. We ran to the side yard where Mr. Fargo had left his work. Mom held in her breath when she saw the path of little footprints across the painting. What are we going to do? I asked. What can we do? Mom said. Mr. Fargo and Jimmy came around the house then. Jimmy was telling him about his sailing adventure. I was never scared. He said, I knew it was a keel boat. I knew it couldn't go over. He stopped when he saw us and gave me a weak smile. Peter wasn't scared either, he added, but Mr. Fargo wasn't listening anymore. He'd seen the footprints across his painting. His face turned purple. I held Tootsie tight and waited for the explosion. Frank? Mom began, but Mr. Fargo held up his hand to stop her from speaking. He got down on all fours and crawled around on his canvas. He stood up and walked away from it. Then he came closer. Then he walked away. Then he came closer again. He squinted. He scratched his beard. We held our breaths. Finally, he muttered, baby feet. I looked at Jimmy. He shrugged. As if to say, don't ask me. Baby feet, Mr. Fargo said again, coming toward me. I backed away. He wasn't getting his hand on my little sister. Itsy bitsy baby feet, Mr. Fargo cooed. Itsy bitsy teensy weensy baby feet. He tickled the bottoms of Tootsie's feet. She squealed. Then he laughed. Mr. Fargo actually laughed. How'd you like to be my partner, Tootsie Pie? She held her arms up out to the sky. He swung her up in the air. I think we've got something here, he told her. I think those little baby feet of yours are going to be a big hit. None of us knew what we was talking about, but we were all relieved. That night after supper, Jimmy and I used up a whole jar of Noxema. We had sunburned faces, necks, and ears. Our ears hurt more than anything. Why didn't you use suntan lotion? Mom asked. I never burn, Jimmy said. Famous last words, Grandma said. Then Dad, who had supper in his room, came down in his robe. He clinked his spoon against the glass and said, I'd like your attention for a minute. Everyone looked at him. I behaved very badly this afternoon, he said, and I want to apologize. And I want to apologize to everyone on the boat, but especially to Muriel, who saved the day. I was proud of Dad for admitting that he'd acted like a sore loser. So when he looked over at me, I gave him a high sign and he smiled. Then Mr. Fargo clinked the spoon again to his glass. He stood up and said, I want to thank Tootsie for walking across my canvas and giving me the idea for a series of paintings called Baby Feet. Here, here, Buzzy Sr. said, raising his coffee cup. Let's have a toast to Baby Feet and to Muriel, 
who always saves the day. He gave Grandma a big kiss. Grandma blushed. Buzzy, she said, not in front of the children. Somehow, I didn't think, somehow, I don't think Grandma was talking about us when she said children. I think she meant Mom and Dad and Mr. and Mrs. Tubman because they were the only ones that looked surprised.